All right, we're talking about 30, 60, 90 triangles. It's a happy, happy day. Okay, this is another special triangle. If you need um, a quicker overview, I'm going to be pretty detailed in this video. I've got a video linked over there where I talk about 45, 45, 90 triangles and 30, 60, 90 triangles in the same video pretty quickly. Okay, also, if you just need to learn about 45, 45, 90 triangles, not the quick way, I'll link one over there. And yes, all right, let's go. 30, 60, 90 triangle is another special triangle, okay? Um, the angles of a triangle always add to 180. So if you just knew 60 and 90, you're going to know, even if they didn't tell you that this one's 30. Same if you didn't know the 60 degrees, they told you 30 and 90. You'll know that one's 60 by subtracting these two from 180. Okay. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay. Just like our 45, 45, 90 had, um, sides that were, um, related to each other in a certain way. So does this one. Okay. So the hypotenuse, the one across from your right angle is always two when you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle or related to two. Sorry. Don't always just put the, the answer is two because that won't be right. <laughs> You'll see what I mean in just a minute. All right. This side across from the 30 degrees, it's going to be the shortest side is one. The side across from the 60 degrees is going to be the square root of three. Okay. So hang with me if you're like, what the crap is she talking about? Okay. Here we go. I made a little mini version here for you. You're welcome. Okay. Now for a second, you might be like, why do I even have to learn this? Why can't I just use the Pythagorean theorem, right? This is our Pythagorean theorem. If you need a quick overview, click over there. Okay. The reason is, look at this guy. We have two unknowns. What? So the Pythagorean theorem, don't tell it, but it's not very helpful in this situation. Okay. So that's why we need to know this. Okay. All right. Here we are looking for both X and Y. Okay. There's um, a couple ways you could do this. I'm going to show you one way here, the other way here. Okay. So here we go. We want to know what these two numbers are. What I like to do first is label what the sides are. It's basically in their simplest form. Okay. So my hypotenuse is two here. So this number is somehow related to two. My one across from the 30 is one. And the one across from the 60 is the square root of three. Now this doesn't mean X equals the square root of three and Y equals one. We just know they're related to those numbers. These numbers are going to help us find what X and Y are. Okay. So what happened? The number that we know is 20. So what happened to this two to get it to 20? Well, it was multiplied by 10, right? Two times 10 gives me 20. So basically how you could think of it is uh, it's not to scale, but you could think of it as that this triangle is 10 times bigger than this one. Okay. So if this side is times 10, because it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, this side is also times 10 and this side is times 10. Oh my gosh, not too bad, right? So that means X equals 10 times the square root of three, which I can just write as 10 times the square root of three. Okay. I would say, 99% of the time your teacher will probably want, we call this the exact answer where you leave the radical there. Now, if your radical could be, um, what's my word I'm looking for? Simplified. <laughs> then you'll want to simplify it. Okay. If you're like, how do you do that? Guess what? Bam, video. Okay. So if for some reason they want a decimal, that might be a little weird, but Hey, you do you teacher, um, plug that into your calculator and you'll get a not so pretty decimal, but there you go. Okay. What is Y? You're like, hurry and get to Y lady. Y on my most simplified one is one, but we figured out this one is 10 times bigger. So one times 10 gives me 10. So Y is 10. Now that one was pretty awesome because it was 10, but you can imagine the possibilities. It could be a fraction. It could be pretty much anything. So Sometimes it's pretty easy to tell, but this one, 
um, it may not be so easy to tell. So we will take a look at this one as well. Okay, same principle going on here. Um, these numbers are all related to each other the same way these are. Oh gosh, that's off the screen. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is where it's important because they've turned it this way, right? I say they, it was me, sorry. Um, they've turned it. So this is where you need to make sure because the sides do matter, okay? Um, the side across from 30, how do I know that's 30? Well, because this is 90, this is 60. It adds to 180, so that means this is 30, okay? There we go. Now, the one across from 30 is related to one in a special way. They are buddies. The one across from the 90 degrees, the hypotenuse, is two, related to two. And the one across from the 60 is related to the square root of three. That's kind of the bugger, right? Okay, so how are these numbers related? So this is where this one was really easy to be like, oh, 10, but this one, uh, not so much. Square root of three times what gave me 12? I'm not sure. So this is where we use proportions, okay? I do not currently have a proportions video. That might be an oversight. If I ever make one, hey, I'll link it. Okay, so how are these related? What we're going to do is it's all about the relationship between these numbers, okay? 12 and the square root of three are related in the same way, whatever y is and two, okay? Just like over here, they were all multiplied by 10. Oh gosh, they were all multiplied by the same thing. It's just not so easy to figure out what that was this time, okay? So how we do that is we set up the relationship between 12 and the square root of three, they're buddies, is the same as the relationship between y and two, okay? Make sure I put the ones that we're trying to figure out, the ones in black here, both on top and the standard ones from here on bottom. You need to make sure they line up, okay? Now, how do I solve this proportion? I am going to cross multiply, okay? So y times the square root of three is this is, th sorry, <laughs> square root of three times y equals 12 times two is 24, okay? All right, now what? We are going to, we want y alone, so we're gonna divide off the square root of three on both sides, okay? Those go away, so I'm left with y equals 24 of the square root of three. Okay, you might be like, I'm done, but <gasps> hold on. Oh my gosh. We can't have a radical in our denominator because denominators are very sensitive, okay? And a lot of times they're irrational numbers and we just don't like to have them in our denominator. So I can't remember if I said that I linked radical videos, but <laughs> if I did, they're linked. If not, I will link it over there on how to rationalize this denominator, okay? So... To get rid of the square root of three, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna multiply by the square root of three over the square root of three. Why am I allowed to do that? Well, because the square root of three over the square root of three uh, simplifies down to one. So it's just like I'm multiplying by one, okay? Now, a better question even, why did I do that? Well, because, guess what? The square root of three times the square root of three, guess what it does? It cancels out those radicals and just leaves me with a three. Oh, that's a much prettier denominator. Okay, now the top is 24 square roots of three. Guess what? You're almost done. You're so close. If these numbers out here can simplify, we want to simplify them. Okay, so uh, three goes into both of them. So three goes into three once. So we're over a one, which we don't really need to write. Three goes into eight, sorry, <laughs> 24, eight times. So I am left with eight square roots of three. And which letter was that? That was Y. So Y is eight square roots of three. Okay, now I just need to find X. Um, you could use the Pythagorean theorem now if you wanted to, if you're like, that's my favorite thing that I want to do. Or we can do proportions again. 
because it's a 30, 60, 90 video, we're going to do the proportions. So, um, again, we can use the same one here. So 12, I'm going to use a different color because this makes it easier to keep them separated. So 12 is related to the square root of three, the same way X is related to one. Okay. Now this is technically done because it's over one, but let's go ahead and multiply it out. So remember I put both my black ones on top, the blue ones on bottom. Okay. So let's go ahead and cross multiply. Bum, 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 bum. So you're left with um, the square root of three times X. I'm still on the screen, right? Yes. Okay. Equals one times 12, which is 12. All right. I want X alone. So I'm going to divide off that square root of three. Divide off the square root of three. All right. So I get X equals 12 square roots of 12. Sorry, 12 over the square root of three. But this should be like an alarm now. We do not like radicals in our denominator. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of three over the square root of three. Again, we do that because square root of three times the square root of three just gives me a three. 12 times the square root of three is 12 square roots of three. Almost done, but guess what? 12 and three can simplify um, to four square roots of three. And that is my X equals that. Okay, so X is four square roots of three. And you are done. All right, get your homework done. Go to bed. Have dreams of math that are nightmares.